I worked for state uh, government um, in different positions under the governor's office and a state legislator um, for about 18 years and focused a lot on consumer advocacy in those positions, consumer services, constituent affairs, education. And I've been with AARP for a little over two, well, going on two and a half years now. The months go by faster than I like to think sometimes. Um, one of the things that I've really come to um, like a full circle under, understanding of AARP is that they're a full circle association. Our membership starts at age 50, but our goal is to improve the quality of life for anyone over the age of 50. And that, that starts even with people who are 18, 24, 36, um, because hopefully all of us are going to make it to age 50. Um, the other alternative is not a very good one. And caregiving is one issue in particular that resonates very strongly with me. My father passed away when I was 11. I'm the oldest of three girls. Um, my mom was a stay-at-home wife and a farm, farm wife. Um, when my dad passed away suddenly from a massive heart attack, she was kind of thrown for a loop. Um, we were fortunate that my dad was a very um, fiscally conservative individual, and my mom had savings and Social Security and um, the farm to, you know, to help provide for her and myself and my two sisters. But without a doubt, there were times when I could tell, even at that age, that my mom was a little bit lost. And... She was a very intelligent, um, hardworking individual, and, and she did just fine. Um, but it was difficult. When I was, um, let's see, 20, I was a sophomore down at Carbondale, my mom fell down a flight of steps. She um, was staying with my aunt at my cousin's house. She'd gotten up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, opened the wrong door, thinking it was the bathroom, and fell down a flight of... Um, wooden steps onto a concrete floor. Um, she broke every rib on the right side of her um, chest, uh, tore a rotator cuff, and never ever fully recuperated from that. So when my three, I have three daughters, um, when my third youngest was born, I was caring for three children under five, my husband, and my mother, who at that point in time had um, full-blown COPD, uh, was on oxygen for about two and a half, three years before she passed away. And so it resonates very strongly with me for all of you out there that are caregivers or may someday be caregivers, how important it is for us to be prepared to have those talks about planning, not only the financial part, but the spiritual and the material part. And Prepare to Care, which is a booklet that's in your um, bag, will give you some of the essential tools. And hearing the first two speakers this morning, there are topics that are covered in here or on our AARP website that can help you kind of put all those things together. Because it is a little bit overwhelming and sometimes you need a, a resource to be able to sit down and something you can go back to. But most of all, I want to stress the importance of when you are a caregiver, being able to care for yourself. Um, uh, personally, here right now, I'm going to tell you that when my mom passed away, I lost myself. And it was a very difficult time, and it took me um, a couple of years to really realize that I had lost myself. I had lost myself in becoming a caregiver. Um, Fortunately, you know, I was able to, to realize that and to work to bring back some of who I was and the things that I enjoyed. But I think it is very, very easy um, as caregivers when it's someone that we love that it's not, it's not really even that it's that difficult to be a caregiver because you do love them. Um, but it's as easy to be a caregiver as it is to lose yourself. So I want to stress to you today, um, if not you personally, 
maybe someone that you know who's dealing with providing care for maybe someone who's terminally ill or um, you know, in a nursing home, even then it's still you know, very important that they find a way to take care of themselves. So for yourself or for that other person, you know, try to find ways to make a little bit of time every day to focus on the things that you enjoy. Whether it's 15 minutes of listening to your favorite artist, and there may be Prince artists or Prince fans out there, um, or, or taking 15 minutes of the day to read your Bible um, or to, you know, watch a half hour sitcom. And I don't care if it's the silliest show on earth. And I'm going to, I'll, I'll be very honest here. Um, I am guilty and I have canceled my subscription to um, Bravo Network because the housewives of Orange County, Beverly Hills, where that was like my guilty pleasure. I know it is a ridiculous show. Um, but it's so ridiculous that I didn't have to think when I was watching it. And I could laugh at other people. Um, so take time to really focus on yourself. Now, I do want to go over, I help do um, outreach and education and get involved in, and help support programs like this throughout um, the southern part of the state. I cover everything south of I-70. But I also am so very fortunate to get to go to our state capitol January through May and do lobbying efforts. Yeah, that's really exciting. Uh, sounds much more important than it is. I'm kidding. It, it's a very, very important position um, as far as helping to advocate for issues that really matter. And in AARP Illinois, we do have um, volunteer advocates who come to Springfield and help us meet with legislators. And a couple of things that we're working on this year that are very important, and if you have um, pens and you want to write down these bill numbers, and I apologize, I... I've had terrible allergies and sinuses, and it's almost a struggle to, to breathe. I didn't even eat lunch because I can't chew and breathe at the same time. House Bill 6162 and Senate Bill 3097, that's the, the sister bill. Senate Bill 3097, House Bill 6162. Its acronym is ELECT. And it's employee something, something, something. Um, I'm lucky enough to understand when my kids send LOL or SMH, which I'm shaking my head right now. But I mean, I'll, I'll, every, almost every time I get SMH from them, I'm like, what, what did that mean? Um, the elect bill would allow uh, public and private employees in Illinois that have current sick time benefits this is sick time benefit, not personal time, not comp time, sick time benefits in your employee handbook that you could use up to half of that for caregiving. So if my employer gives me 12 days, 12 days a year, one day a month, I could use up to, in like six months increments, six months, I could use three days every six months to take my daughter to the hospital, to take my... Um, mother-in-law to the doctor, um, and, and the, the um, definition of family is defined as far as who you could take, but it's a pretty liberal um, definition. And that way you could use paid time to do caregiving, because AARP really is very focused on the caregiving component and how much our country really needs the family caregiver. Annually in Illinois, non-paid family caregivers, the hours that you put in, if you are paid, are approximately $18 billion worth of care. That's a lot of hours spent caring for those that we love. And so we're trying to make sure that there are things in place. Um, and we were very fortunate. The chamber, Illinois chamber, at first they were opposed but we worked with them to define specifically, like um, accumulating time, et cetera. And so they're, they're now neutral, which is good. Um, but there is still a little bit of pushback from some business groups. Um, but we're hopeful that it will pass and that it will go to the governor's desk. And so, you know, kind of keep your eye on the paper. 
It passed the House. It's now over in the Senate. Um, contact your local senator and ask them to sponsor the bill or at least vote yes. Um, and when it does pass, or send a letter right now to the governor's office and ask him, you know, when it gets to his desk that he signs it. The other one um, that we passed last year was the CARE Act, which I know we talked, um, the physician earlier I think was talking about, you know, like recording um, conversations with physicians, et cetera. The CARE Act helps individuals when they're admitted to the hospital. You actually identify who your primary caregiver is. Um, let's say, for instance, I've got two sisters. When my mom was still alive, um, my sister Amy actually lived with her at that time. She was a nurse. So Amy was technically, for the most part, the primary caregiver. Amy would have been identified so that the hospital, so they have a point of contact to let people know if you're being transferred, if there's you know a, a situation that needs addressed immediately. Um, and that person is also the person that gets information upon dismissal. And it, it really does, and the Hospital Association is working with us on this. Um, they're implementing complete details on aftercare because they don't want people readmitted. It benefits the hospital as much as it does the patient. And so those things are all kind of coming together. Um, so, you know, if you're dealing with hospital situations, make sure to stress, you know, how important it is that you get, I think you can have um, recordings or you can have, um, like, pictures of specific follow-up care and those kind of things. So it's really a much more detailed approach to dismissals. So those are the, um, the one, CARE Act was passed last year, signed into legislation, is rolling out. The ELECT Act is um, pass the House over to the Senate. And the final one, which is HB 4351, is um, passed the Senate, or passed the House, is now in the Senate, and it's, it just has one, one bill, House Bill 4351. And the House Bill 4351, what it does primarily is it protects the DON score, which is the determination of need score which is critical when it comes to getting that at-home community care. And this bill is um, Representative Harris, Doug Harris from Chicago, or Greg Harris, I'm sorry, and then Senator Biss in the Senate. Um, both of them are huge advocates for caregivers. Um, but this is another important bill. Contact your state senator, send a letter to the governor's office. Um, the governor's office is trying to promote a different use of the Dawn score, um, and, and we're concerned about that. So that's why we want to try and make sure this bill gets through. Yes? Dawn score, D-O-N, and that's determination of needs. Okay. Um, I do also want to invite you guys next Saturday, April 30th, we are um, involved with the Money Smart Week program at the United Methodist Church in O'Fallon. It's on uh, 504 East US Highway 50. And we're going to have a shred truck there from 9 a.m. to noon. So if you have important documents you've been going through, you've got old medical bills, um, tax returns that are seven years or more older, old checkbook stubs, um, any of that kind of stuff, if you want to come over, we've got a shred truck. You can shred your um, information, no charge. And then there are also several other like financial classes that are going on. Um, we're going to do a program at 10 o'clock on preventing um, identity theft and fraud. And one of the individuals who's going to help with the class is actually a retired federal agent who did some of the um, investigations into Medicare and Medicaid fraud. So it'll be a good source of information again next Saturday. And I think there are programs at the church from like 9 to 1. Um, we do not have a limit, but I will tell you, if you show up with a pickup truck and the back is full, I'm probably going to ask that, you know, just two or three bags. Um, that's kind of what I've been telling everybody. We do have just one truck, so when it's full, we'll be done for the day. <clears throat> Nine to noon. Mm -hmm. I, 
it's on the um, Money Smart Week website. So if you type in Money Smart Week O'Fallon, Illinois, it, it should come up. And you can also, um, if any of you are on social media, Facebook, like the AARP Illinois Facebook site, and then you'll get um, information on different things that we're doing. I want to reference the booklet, um, the Prepare to Care booklet, a couple of things real quick. In the back, there is a, a list of all kinds of different information content, kind of similar to what you had said earlier, sir. Um, you know, physicians, medications, et cetera. But on page 14, how many of you guys have a smartphone? Okay, or family members that have smartphones. There's a really neat AARP um, RX app that allows you to take pictures of medications and then it will transpose it into the app so that you'll have access, then you can just tap that app at any point in time and you can have information on your medications when you take them. Um, you know, you can take everything from a picture to a prescription medication to your, you know, vitamin D that you take in the morning. Um, and it is critically important, whether it's prescription or over-the-counter, to have a complete list of anything that you take. Another one is um, on page 12, it references the Home Fit Guide. And all of this information is free to anyone, whether you're an ARP member or not, on our AARP.org website. The Home Fit Guide goes over a lot of good ideas that you can do to make your home age with you. Um, and some of it's just good common sense safety ideas, but um, I used to do some uh, traffic safety presentations, and I said if we all always use common sense, law enforcement would not be in, 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 um, on the roads. You know, um, if we all drove 55 or 70, we wouldn't have to worry about the state trooper sitting in the median. Um, and the final one that um, was brought up earlier, too, about driving, um, you can go on the AARP website. We need to talk. There's actually, you can watch, there's like three modules that you can take time, watch on your own. And it gives you, you can print out like worksheets to kind of make assessments on whether or not perhaps your loved one is still, you know, doing the best behind the wheel. And it talks about ways to approach the subject of driving and aging. So, I mean, there's just a plethora of information at AARP.org. Um, I highly encourage you, if you're not um, a member and using it, get on there and take a look. You, like I said, you don't even have to be a member. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>